Alright, well, welcome back, guys. What we just done is programmed our morph and our switch for ligand, and now we have essentially done a hold for the whole protein. Now I want to zoom back in on the active site, so I'm going to move my cursor out here. I'm going to store with scene GTP active site. So it's going to we're going to get a chance to admire our protein after the morph, and then it's going to zoom in on the GTP in the active site. And you can see the three phosphate groups here. This one you can see is actually a nitrogen, which makes it non-hydrolyzable, so you can actually solve the structure. So that's just one interesting thing. I'm going to hold that scene just a little longer, because it's going to essentially play through and zoom back out. And I don't want it to. I'd like to hold it. So again, we're going to hold down Shift, right-click, and drag that out. Make sure you can get it right on. Seems a little tricky. There we go. And once you got it, you can adjust it. It's pretty easy. I'm going to adjust that out here. Sounds good. So zoom in on the active site. Let us look at it. And then I want to zoom back out to the whole protein. So I'm going to move out a little ways here. And I'm going to store with scene GTP bound protein. So that looks good. So it's going to, let's watch our whole movie real. Spin. I'm going to zoom into the active site. Watch. Then it's going to start to do its morph. Then it's going to zoom back into our GTP in the active site. Then it's going to zoom back out. And then it's going to try to loop around so it has this little bit of a wiggle. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we could do the old way with the insert a, uh, a Y roll, but that's going to uh, cause us to have to lose our state ideal. And so it's going to kind of screw a movie up. So let's do some manual rotations here. I'm just going to right click and hit store. And I'm going to rotate this to myself somewhere. Go a little farther in the movie. And I'm going to just spin this on my own. Store that here. I'm going to move a little farther in the movie. I'm going to store it here, maybe. Let's see what that looks like. And let's go back all the way around to this point. So I'm just going to copy this one, right click, shift, hold to down here. So that should give us a full spin. Cool. So it looks like we got our whole movie programmed in. Now I got some extra frames at the end I don't care about. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold down control. At the end, I'm going to left click and drag until I get right up to the next to that last scene. And I'm going to do it until it just right there. Okay. So that's, that's, that's our whole movie there. So we made a movie of just, of just changing the camera views and moving around. Now that the thing that we really want to do here is switch our ligands and have them fly in and out. Now this is the tricky part. So, bear with me here. Now, what really happens in a protein is that the ligands are changing during a change in conformation. And so what we'd ide ideally like to do is to have these set. For example, GT GDP needs to start out in this position, and GTP needs to end in this position. But we want to have them kind of change in the middle. So the way we do this is by entering what's called three-button uh, motions. So if you right-click here on the mouse mode and go to motions, that's going to give us an extra option, the motions button over here on our selection window. What I'm going to start to do is store the positions just of some of these selections, our GTP. So here's our GDP. We want it to, at this point, still be bound. And so I'm just going to store it. Go to motion, store, and that gives us a whole new set of, of figure options down here, GDP. I'm going to do the same thing at the other end where GTP is, but I'm going to store GTP at that stage. And so those are now stored at the two different positions. GTP is here. And I might want to move that a little, right click and drag it so it's perfect. And let's see, that's about right. Sure. Sounds good to me. So they're stored in those two positions. Now, the important thing about this is that we can then, in either one of the two states, start moving around our other ligand. So here we are stored with GTP there. The GDP is gone. GDP is gone by about here. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a new GDP position. So I'm going to go to motions. I'm going to do drag. Now you have to have a middle mouse button for this. And so there's a number of ways you can do this. But if you have a three button mouse with a normal mouse wheel in the middle, just clicking the mouse wheel will do it. I'm going to hold down shift. I'm going to click the middle mouse button. And I'm going to drag this GDP away. And I'm going to store it in its new position. Hit done, and I'm going to store it here. Okay, so if you notice, 
it just flies away. Yeah. Woo. Okay. Now I want to do the same thing for GTP. So you see GTP is showing up about here. And I want to, at this point, I want it to be flying in. So I'm going to do the same thing. GTP, I'm going to go to drag. I'm going to hold down my shift key, right middle mouse button, and I'm going to fly it in from maybe over here. And I'm going to hit done. So what we're going to see is our GDP is going to fly away. And our GDP is going to fly in. Now, if you notice, there's some wiggling in here. It's not what it should be doing because it's gradually flying out to try to loop. So we need to copy those frames from the beginning and the end. So I'm going to shift right click on my GTP, look to the end so it's the nose to hold that GTP there. Shift right click and drag. Shift right click and drag. There we go. And I'll do the same thing for GDP where it starts so it starts out in the right place. This is probably the hardest part. There we go. So let's go back to the watch the movie from the beginning. Our GDP bound. It's in the first state. We're going to zoom in and look at that GDP and that arginine and that magnesium. Now we're going to do our shift. Isn't that cool? And then we're going to look at that new GTP. We're going to do a zoom out so you can see the whole thing. And then we're going to do a gradual spin. So you can look at the whole protein and admire it. Now, I, I'm not sure I like everything about this movie. Uh, it's, it's just minor edits here. I got a little bit of a long, random gap here that's not doing anything. I have my hold, but it's kind of doing nothing. So I want to get rid of some of those frames. I'm just going to hold down Control, left click and drag until it's red, and that'll just delete those frames for us. So it'll kind of zoom back out, and then it's going to do its spin. Looks pretty good to me. All right, so I want to always be saving along here. I'm going to save my session. We have a real nice movie now. Everything is animated and moving. We've got our two things flying in and out. Here comes our GDP, and our GTP flies in, and it's going to hold there until the end of the movie. So our movie's done. Uh, I liked what I see. Let's make sure. It's nice. Okay. Everything's visible. I think I don't see any bugs. That looks really good. That looks great. Good enough for me. So I definitely don't like this last little bit where it switches to GDP for some reason. I don't know why that happened, but if you ever want to do something where you're editing, uh, you can do it manually. Uh, it looks like we have some pretty good data here from about 679 on. Uh, and so what we can do is we can type in the command M delete, which is just a movie delete command. And if you don't know what it does, just hit question mark and I'll tell you what to do. So it's an M delete count frame. So I want to delete everything after frame 679. So M delete. And it says count. So how many frames between 729 and 679? It's 50 frames starting at 679. There we go. We lose anything there? Nope, it looks pretty good. Ah, so it looks like that's kind of funny. We want to make sure that our frame here looks like it's switching the GDP there. So I'm just going to copy this last frame. I'm going to make it where it switches here. I'm going to make GTP stay. I'm going to store that. Okay, and then I'm going to just copy that. Oops. Maybe I'll store all here. There we go. And then I'll just copy that out to the end. You're going to save me? Looks like it. Sounds good. So if you want to export your movie, then we can do uh, save movie as. I'm going to save it as an MPEG. And I'll show you kind of what settings you should go with. Good quality is fine. We'll just go with the width and height. If you want to let this process overnight and make this the most beautiful movie you've ever seen, you can click this right there. 
I recommend not doing that because it will take all night. That's just going to prettify everything and make it good. Now I can do 100 if I wanted to. That's fine, and I'm just going to save it to my desktop, and I'll call this to the This is going to be ready for YouTube. This is going to process all of our frames. We have 679, and you can keep track of where they're at. And it's going to play the movie for you. Now, hopefully, you fixed all your bugs before you process the movie. Otherwise, you're going to have to redo it all. But it's going to give it kind of a slow-mo as you watch this movie. So that should be all you need. If you need any help with this, of course, you can just come and talk to me. Uh, or you can leave anything in the comments, and I'll work on it. Uh, so thanks a lot for watching this, and have a good night. Bye.